The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. I was thinking this morning for the sake of the married men in the parish and those to be married someday. Uh, Joseph is a man of very few words. It seems like the only words he knows how to say is yes to God and to his wife. You can laugh at that. It's okay. (laughs) Yes, Father, don't give up your day job. I know. But I want to talk about, for a minute, the, this, this man of few words and the fidelity of what he did, not what he said. And, and for men and women alike, there is something to be said here for all of us in our relationship with Christ. So he's this faithful servant of few words. And the first thing we see is Mary was betrothed to Joseph. And what does that mean? Joseph agreed to be married to her. And with her situation the way it was, according to conventional wisdom and according to the wisdom of the world, Joseph should not have seen this marriage through. And so what Joseph does is he becomes a parent as a man who trusts God's word over human convention. He trusts God's word over and above what what seems to be common sense and the wisdom of the world. He trusts God's word over these things. And if you just take a look in your own personal meditation at generally, how, um, how successfully the wisdom of the world seems to work for us as opposed to God's word, then you can see the wisdom apparent that is exemplified in Joseph. He's told by God not to be afraid to take her into his home. And so Joseph becomes now here an icon of a good Catholic truly receiving Jesus into heart and home. With Mary, it's a little different. Mary receives Jesus interiorly. God's very being comes into Mary in the most inner part of who she is, as not only physically as a woman, but spiritually everything. And yet with Joseph, it's not so intimate, and he has to take a step in faith to receive Christ and actually craft a home for Christ in his heart. And this becomes the calling of every good Catholic, 
to accept Jesus into my heart and also into my home. If I accept Jesus into my heart but do nothing to bring the presence of Christ in my home, then I am indeed a contradiction. This becomes really and truly apparent, especially in how we see the Eucharist, where we, like Joseph, there's a little bit of a distance between us and Jesus compared to the way Mary had this closeness to him. Joseph steps in faith and receives in his heart as we receive the Eucharist. And the Eucharist becomes the place where we make a home for Jesus in our heart, and yet we make our heart a home for the Eucharistic presence that's in us when we go to our own homes and the way we treat each other. Joseph does something else here. He's told, this is interesting, that he has to pronounce the name for people to hear. You are to name him Jesus, the angel tells him. So Joseph is the first to publicly proclaim the name of Jesus. You could say he's the first evangelist. Some of you would argue and say it's Mary. But Joseph is the first to really make the public proclamation the name of Jesus because he's been holding the name as he was instructed by the angel. You could say that uh, Joseph is an icon of God the Father sending the Son on the mission of salvation by saying this name. It pronounces Jesus' name as the reality, the truth, the way, and the life that now is revealed for the world to see. And Joseph has a part, you could say, in, uh, in, in being an icon of the Father, sending the Son. The world sees the Father sending the Son on his mission for the Christ. There's also something to be said in relationship to your, your ordinary baptismal ritual in our Catholic faith. Because Joseph does this naming in a ritual context. He does this naming at the circumcision of Jesus. And parents do the same thing in the baptism. In the baptism, the, the church asks, what name do you give this child? And the parents are asked to say the name, and they say it out loud in a ritual context for the whole church to hear. It should give us pause about how we name our children. It should give us pause at looking at deeper meaning into names instead of naming in frivolity and capriciousness. If I may have a bias, there's nothing like the name of a good saint. And, and if you think some of the saints are weird, I've heard some really weird names that are not saints. Jesus, uh, Joseph is told later on in the gospel, it's another one of his actions, now in the gospel of Luke, take the child to Egypt. But then later he's told, take the child back to Nazareth. In other words, under the instruction of the angel, Joseph cares for and protects Jesus. This is the role of every Christian, to care for and protect Jesus, to guard and protect the place of Jesus in my heart and not allow other things to go in there, to protect the name of Jesus, that my lips do not curse Jesus or utter blasphemies. I protect the name of Jesus, and so my mouth becomes something that utters sanctity. In a sense, it's akin to the baptismal ritual. We're all baptized priest, prophet, and king. Priest meaning everywhere we go, our presence should make the world a holier place. And everything we should say should be saturated with God's word. And the king is that we use our authority and our power and our influence, not like the world does, 
but we use authority, power, and influence for the sake of serving the name of Jesus. And so Joseph, he protects and cares for Jesus. He's not simply the one who wants to be beneficially, benefit, a benefactor of all Jesus' good things and his gifts. Instead, he's the one who goes beyond merely receiving the gifts that God gives to loving God with his whole heart, his whole soul, his whole mind, and all his strength because he's a man of God and a model of faith for all Christians. Regina Jenny, let her rest.